Okay, I'm. This is being written in blood. Next time we're free, we're making a video. Look at me. Look, look at, at me. me. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm actually serious. Look okay. at me. No, 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 yeah. We're making a video. We're making a video. And oh, boys. What do you mean? How do you cross in a corduroy there? <laughs> there it is. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Congratulations on your extremely funny show. I love Thank it. You. This Thank is, you. by the way, so gorgeous. Is Look that, at that a screen or paper? What That's the hell paper. Is going on? Okay. It's a screen. It's okay. paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's a poster. It's a screen, like, right? <laughs> how how so the the show consists of about five or six sort of 12 minute 12 15 minute episodes right five to be exact yes but yes five 12 minute ish shorts and do these characters come did you guys create these characters specifically for this or have you been sort of developing them for a little while um what well, kind of a little while i mean they're they're definitely like they touch on like energies like comedic things that we do that we love to do like i love to play straight Kate loves to play kind of like normal girl, you know. Yeah. Um, we love to play like kind of we love like the alien short, which none of you have seen. Is like <laughs> um, you know kind of like a really a heightened version of our friendship. So these are like zones we like to be in that we uh, found nice little containers for. I love I love the alien short so much, and just the idea of these two people slowly getting more and more made up to look ridiculous as the conversation gets more depressing between yes, the two of them. Yes, well, that's beautifully put. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> What do you mean by you, you love to play normal girl? How do you define normal girl? Um, girls, I, went, I mean, I went to high school in Los Angeles. <laughs> and so just like sort of like this vocal tone. <laughs> and um, I did a character special for Netflix. You can look it up. And I do a character that's sort of in that register. Yeah, Rachel. It's just where I go. It's just a place that I go comedically every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's sort of very a place for you that you find yourself dropping into. I do it with love. It's not meant to, oh, be, yeah, to no. be harsh. Those are our people. Like we love yeah. those people. Yeah. Like, these those are our family members. And, what, and when you say straight, what what is what is what is your your version of that? Uh just like in this pocket. <laughs> you know, just like well, just like very sincere. I love when John plays straight. Yeah, I think the key thing. to the straightness is is the just earnestness and like the gratitude. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you think that comes from? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think uh, I've I've known so many straight guys in my life who are like deeply curious and like because they've never suffered, <laughs> <laughs> so they're ju they're just like open to every experience because yeah, yeah. they can't imagine it not working out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of where it comes from. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. A great uh, example or uh, description of me. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah. you're, you're fun. So how did you guys like? How did you guys come up with these characters? Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> just, uh, that. It's your job to be curious, right now. Right now. Uh, that's why there are so so many straight white male hosts. Because they're just yeah, curious. Totally. All the time. Very curious. blank canvases. <laughs> Project anything you want onto yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where did the series? How did the series come about? I see that Tim Heidecker is one of the producers on it. And Eric Wareheim. Tim and Eric, <laughs> their production company is called <laughs> Absolutely, and they're very wonderful. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the, and their production, we, first we partnered with Vimeo, um, where you can find the series, vimeo.com slash 555. Please buy it, $3.99. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but they're, $3.99 for the whole series? For the whole yes. series. Right. Do the yes. math. It's it, totally worth it. It's extremely funny, guys. It Thank comes you. out to 426. I failed math in high school. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but Vimeo is really cool because they're, they're not just kind of another, you know, YouTube. Not, I mean, YouTube's great. <laughs> I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but no, they're 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 specifically they're they're they curate their content. They they want they encourage young filmmakers to make stuff. So they were so cool with us kind of bringing in these wildly different ideas, which to us were like we know this doesn't seem that marketable, but um, and it might not be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but but they were so cool with it, and they totally understood like our pretentious film references, and we're excited about them. What and, what were some of them? Well, like this shot in particular is very three women by Robert, Robert Altman. Altman. You know, 
I did not. But now that you say that, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's they're it's tucked. Himself. They're hidden away. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, all, but also like waiting for Guffman is is huge in for us and uh, and the comeback, Lisa Goudreau and Showgirls. Show show a lot of the co- no, but a lot of the True. Col- uh, there okay, there was no waterfall scene <laughs> though. I was we were unfortunately we had to cut it, but yeah. just sort of the the colors that you're gonna I see. Heard there was a Showgirls reference in, it and I just sat there. Waiting. waiting for the waterfall, yeah. <laughs> but it is. I mean, we do love the kind of the intensity of Showgirls and the col- the the cinematography of Showgirls is very much a part of the series. The subtextual elements of Showgirls are throughout the series. Yes, yes. There are no subtextual elements of Showgirls. <laughs> Showgirl, that's everything, true. Everything, everything is in the, is on the front. That's of that. very, yeah, very, that's very true. true. That's very true. But yeah, we always just wanted to do. We have like a backlog of shorts in our friendship that we've always wanted to make, and these ones in particular were like ideas we've had for years that just needed like an because because part of what makes them funny is that they're like really lush visually and filmed in this like very sincere cinematic way so like we we just knew that would require money so we've just been sitting on these ideas for a long time and thankfully vimeo gave us money and how did you guys find the director that sort of helped bring these uh, lush visuals and sort of sincere film style to to life well the director andy de young we have made short films with him in the past yes look him up him and the, and the shorts. But so we were just sort of used to working with him and he's really open to improvisation and most of the series is improvised. Most of what ends up in the final okay. product is improvised. Yes. Yeah. I didn't I didn't even I didn't even realize that. I yeah. thought maybe with this with this episode because you kind of end up in a place filming where it seems like it's a easy place to improvise and yeah, be able to cut car. that together, but a yeah. lot of the rest of the uh, of the show felt very very tight and scripted. Thank well, you. Great. Great, John. Yeah. We did it. <laughs> but so we were used to working with him and we just made short films with him in the past and we love his cinematic urges that we also relate to. Yes. Yeah. Can I ask the this the first no. episode here, uh, the song that you're that is a part of the episode, how does it what is the name of that song? Beat my my, my beat. beat. My beat. My beat. Yeah. Where <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had it to play right now. I know, it's so, so funny. It's so good. Where yeah. did that song come from? Who wrote it? Did you guys write it? This genius composer who composed the music for the whole series named Nicholas Kurgovich. Uh, he's a Vancouver musician, brilliant solo musician. Um, but he he's like always, we've always kind of shared the same like love of like, Late '80s, early '90s, like mm, 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 you know, <laughs> those are your moves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, and um, and we so we we kind of gave him some reference songs. Um, Tiffany, kind of t- exactly yeah. Tiffany, because exactly. this is very the short is in this short. I'm like performing in a mall. I'm like a pop star who like has no fans and is performing in malls um, with like <laughs> child you feel dancers. My heart beat? <laughs> beat, beat, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, okay. that's no, yeah. Really so he like he like totally understood close, exactly close. what we and we also wanted to make sure that the song, though poppy and danceable, was also kind of like dark Upsetting. a little bit. And like yeah. there was something to it that was like a little like <laughs> <laughs> you know. And he <laughs> I think that comes out in the dance move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yes. he's foaming at the mouth a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but so he was so good. He he wrote it. And the haircut as well and that and Yeah, that's... I look like fat Robin. <laughs> Don't you think? That's actually pretty dead on. I know. I look like Fat Robin. It's a it's a hair extension. Yeah. The clip in. So how did the two of you meet and start working together? Let's hear the backstory. We were married before John came out, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, we met. It's not as exciting as stories. I wish we met through friends. <laughs> we met through friends. They cast us in a short film called The Gregs, and um, instant love, instant like we knew within day one we're like we will collaborate. Yeah, we just started hanging out immediately. I was we were both living in New York. Yeah, and John essentially lived in my house for two years in like an un just a sleepover that never ended. Yeah, and we I, we would like. We would end the sleepover maybe if I ran out of underwear. Like it would like, we it, we go like two <laughs> weeks and then I was like I have to get new underwear. Like I have to go home <laughs> because I would wear like the same shirt and pants like every single day. And both of us are shocked that we like weren't dating during that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're like, why am I single? I'm yeah, like, yeah. Hello, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, because like, they're afraid of funny women. Men are afraid of funny women. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've They're never thought about women, that. But not women who have platonic male best yeah, friends who have in their house. someone in their bed. Every Literally day. sleeping underwear. in the yeah. same bed. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's so, I've never that thought about that. And never I still thought about complain it. about it. And <laughs> well, what is it about each other that you think uh, the two of you respond to that made you sort of know that you should collaborate and work together? It's the sex. It's I the do s- think. 
sexually we, there is something. <laughs> we really did, when we met each other, we just had such a similar sensibility that we had developed privately for years. Yeah, yeah. And then we saw each other's stuff, and it was just like recognizing yourself with another person. Okay, well, here I go. Yeah, and so... <laughs> Yeah, it was just a very shared language. Yeah. And we just could slip into improvising and we all our references were the same and Yeah. And one of the things about the show that I that I love that I wonder if you sort of noticed about each other early on when you decided that you should collaborate is that the show is not just funny, it's kind of sad. There's a yes. lot of uh pathos. Yeah, there's a lot of pathos. And it also usually ends on a very sad like each episode ends for the most part on a kind of sad slash funny note, or just sad. Yeah. And I'm curious if you guys noticed that about each what? other early on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, but you're, you're completely right. Unintentional. You're completely yeah. right, yeah. I just think that's what we've always been drawn to in, like, the stuff we like, you yeah. know? Like a um, Todd Solins. Yeah. Um, is yeah. Like, yeah, so... <laughs> but even like waiting for Guffman, which is so funny and and uh, and like easy to watch, it does have like a tenderness and a sadness to it. And we um, hope that it's just not mean. I think that's what we wanted to stay away from. Is even if there were these sad moments or kind of like depressing moments, yeah, we treated it with with love and never were like trying to degrade these people or embarrass them. Yeah. Did you? How did you find? Did you find your, that you had to pull away from that sometimes, or when you were writing, like, oh, maybe that's too mean. We should go this way. Well, yes, we had to pull away because just because of the archetypes we were like using, like agents. You know, it's it's so easy to like make fun of agents, but we didn't want to do that. I mean, they're like kind of doofuses. We didn't want to shy away from like the fact that we wanted to play kind of like dumb <laughs> characters, but that's not what we think of <laughs> agents. You know, but we we um we wanted to focus on their friendship. Yes. So each short is more about a central relationship. Anytime so. we got close to like like the actors, the the Venice Beachy actors, like anytime we got close to feeling like this might be mean, we just focused in on the relationship. And so like so so that the actor short we were like if it ever felt judgmental we we're like let's just make sure we like actually realistically make them fall in love. Like we're like let's make it about them kind of like falling in love with each other versus making fun of those kind of people. I love the the Venice Beach actors uh Short so yeah. much, and I love where where your character ends up having to go, and then <laughs> sort of pulling away, like just this whole idea of becoming an actor and having yeah. to like bare your soul, and how like moving it is, but at the same time so embarrassing and almost it's disgustingly so narcissistic. Yes. absolutely. Yeah, we were excited. A lot of what we do comedically, what we like, is like about people trying to perform themselves. That's what we find funny, and that's what we do as human beings every day. So like. We, we love that short because it's like you get to see them in their like safe zone where they're on the bed just talking in her room and it's like Henley and there's <laughs> yes and there's nothing threatening their performances because they're just alone so it's like they get to kind of perform the best versions of themselves like to each other you know and they're like listening to it like yeah, yeah, yeah you know and then they get in the classroom setting and suddenly it's like spinning out of control because they have like a teacher who's like really smart and, and they like, are unable to seduce each other like yeah. it's like oh the seduction's <laughs> over now you just yeah. have to be open and, and yeah. go through this i thought that your costume in that in that uh in that short was like pretty perfect thank you yes the clogged heel <laughs> really pulled it all together for we me. sent the costume designers pictures of jessica beale and, and like um, jojo contestants. from the bachelor yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know i don't know the bachelor can you you, you will. Don't, you will. You will know. You will it learn soon. to know. Like yeah. When, when, after 22 years of it being on, so soon I will know. So yeah. No. It it takes a while. <laughs> it's so embedded in the culture that you know without knowing. Yeah. I know, it's in I know you. of it. Do you guys watch it? Every season. Yes, I'm behind. We're behind on this season because <laughs> of the press tour. But <laughs> but we really we. It is like a ritual for us, like Monday nights, like yeah. champagne. Like we pulled on the big projection screen at your house. No, we don't share a house. Um, <laughs> but it, and it's very important to us. Yeah. I heard this season isn't very good. Ooh, interesting. Okay, wow. People are gasping. Yeah, yeah. For those Someone just left. People in the oh audience God. are gasping. Um, That's what I heard. No, because I had that feeling at the, towards the beginning. I was like, ugh. I don't but have then that something feeling. turned. Something did turn. And then I was like, it's not bad. No, I was annoyed. I was like, this season is oh, good. Oh. And then something shifted, and I was like, oh, I see. Well, I like what's always troubling about The Bachelor and also what makes it endlessly watchable is that there are always, like, one or two contestants that, like, actually aren't just, like, cardboard cutouts. Like, 
there's like a lot of girls who are like, I'm here for Ben, you know. <laughs> but then there are like, but then there are like one or two that are like, I'm a special ed teacher. Yeah, there's this like, like strikingly beautiful woman who's a special ed teacher, and she's like, and she's so smart. Yeah, she's like, she I speak Italian. Just kind of and, and I, I will say, someone showed me a clip the other day of one of them talking. One of them. One woman talking yes. to Thank another you. woman. <laughs> I'm so sorry. One woman talking to another woman, and she was trying to talk, teach her about emotional intelligence. <laughs> and the other and the other woman was like, "Stop treating me like an idiot." And she's that's like, Corinne. Oh, you're definitely ah! you're that's embodying 100% Corinne. Corinne. Yeah. But there was there was this sense of like the one who was talking about emotional intelligence. I was saying like, what is this person doing here? Why did they sign up for this? Mental this illness. Yeah, yeah. No, not to, but. Truly, it Truly. is crazy. It is. What it's actually doing? despicable the the way they just like allow so many clearly mentally ill people on television and get them so. They're like, drunk. here's another whiskey. Go by yeah. the pool. Yeah, Shh. <laughs> yeah. These, it's, it's. And they're like, so sometimes they'll leave the rose ceremony so drunk, and then it's like daylight. <laughs> like they've all been awake for. They're literally ending the rose ceremony at six a.m. And these women are all tanked, just on a like. And a, then in three hours, they're like mimosas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, but like... Permanent brain damage. Oh, we also love the language of The Bachelor. Like, it's very influential to our to our comedy. <laughs> like, like with this, the Corinne girl this season, she said this thing where she, like, she was really drunk and she was, like, she was, like, flirting with The Bachelor and then, like, it, like, didn't really work out. Like, something wasn't kind of taking off. And she, like, went upstairs and was, like, freaking out. And, like, someone was, like, it's okay, Corinne. Like, she's, like, didn't you guys, like, didn't you guys do, like, the strawberry whipped cream thing? And she goes, no, but nothing grew from that. <laughs> Yeah. It was like through tears, like nothing grew from that. Like when we were just, we've been obsessed with that sentence. Yeah, just like language around like readiness, like I'm ready and I fought for this and just all, <laughs> all of that. Yeah, ex yeah, it's so funny. How much of that is their language versus sort of being fed to them by producers? Well, I think it actually I think it's like a chicken or the egg <laughs> thing. It's chicken or the it's egg. It's chicken or the egg. I think we they don't had know. the bachelor producer whispering in their ear like but it's also that these girls have all watched seasons of the bachelor before so they know this. what's it they know how to hit their mark they know what yeah they're like this use. journey yeah yeah that's what's this so journey crazy about that is that the it's been 20 years and the sort of reality show idea has been embedded in the people who are now on it so it's they're eating not itself. even a parody of the parrot they're like they watch sort of the weird, show yeah like yeah. these women have already watched him on the bachelor yeah. So they're like in Caitlyn's season. It's like, oh my god, it's so dark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that is what you try to bring to five five five. Yes, we try to kind of <laughs> inject <laughs> what was, some of that. Feeling. What was the most difficult episode for you guys to sort of wrap your head around via, like, in shooting or writing Great or question. in post production? I think hands down the most difficult episode was the first one. Yeah. Because of just logistically, there are the most locations. It's sort of the most ambitious. Which is it's this short, the this pop short. star one. It's, yeah, um, you got a mall in it, which yeah. is really hard. I would we had imagine. a mall, we had a car yeah. scene. Yeah, well, and and for us, like we're not, we are used to creating really simple containers structurally, story wise, where we can just improvise loosely within it, and just like it's a chill environment. You know, this was the one that like the plot depended on, like, and then they go here, and then they're in the desert, and then yeah. And we've never tried anything. We were really excited to try something that was like very like plot. Heavy yeah. and like and um, in in a kind of classic Hollywood like revenge way, and um, and it was very hard to pull off. And we were editing it, we we're like, uh oh, but we we've, we've <laughs> figured it out. What was what was what was hard about it to pull off in 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 the edit? It was the tone. It was hard to figure out because when we started making these shorts, we wanted them to all be kind of referency and campy and like and kind of touching on these like like this. We were thinking the colors that, are turned. <laughs> Is this on? The colors are turned all the way up, and yeah. it's very kind of dreamlike. And we like after school, especially, we wanted the car scene to be like, like when I was like when I was little, like I was homeless, and like, but like the only thing that saved me during that time was dance. Like we wanted it to be like that kind of tone, like kind of sent up a little bit. And then when we were shooting it, we just got in a groove that was more naturalistic and more real. And then when we were editing it, it was like trying to piece together moments that were kind of arch and then moments that were a little more nuanced. And it was very hard to find like which way to go. And plot can be, when you have plot points, it can be really unforgiving in the, yeah, in the editing. That you yeah, have to yeah. hit, totally. And but because we, we improvise, so it was yeah. like hours of improvisation and yeah. so, much, so many things that we loved but just couldn't yeah. put in it. Is that why, uh, I would say that I noticed in, in the first episode that it felt like there was the, a point where you guys, where the two actors sort of got to improvise and yes. sort of develop these characters via improvisation. But like I said, the rest of the episodes, I didn't really 
pick up on moments where it felt like you guys were sitting down and improvising the rest of the story? Was that because so you crazy. learned? Cool. Yeah. Well, did you learn the lesson from the first episode, like going into shooting the rest of them? Well, that scene that you're talking about, that we shot that on the first day, and we were like, let's like block off this time to improvise a lot, you know, and then. And then we just, because that was the scene where we felt most in our comfort zone, we like, I guess, yeah, we made sure. But it was, I don't, I don't know. You know, say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half Spanish. I don't know. So, yeah. <laughs> Spanish. Mm-hmm. Uh, where, where from? Mi madre es España. Toda su familia, sí. Pero. Does anyone have any questions out here? You have a microphone. Oh, oh my God. Do it. Hey. Dad? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever have you ever considered our di- auditioning for Saturday Night Live? Life? Considered we. I actually was rejected. Tested. I tested and didn't make the cut. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. How, um, when, how long ago? Uh, two years. Yeah. Can I ask what you what your impressions were? I just did stand up. I'm a stand up, and they were just like, "Come in and do your stand up." Let you do that. Lauren was there. He was this close to me the whole time. Um, no, but I just did stand up, and it was so cool. I mean, I was going into it, and I'm not trying to be modest, not expecting to get it. So yeah, it just yeah. was really cool to like be on that stage and get the no. I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were on the stage, and they're like, "No." <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the stage, they screamed, "No!" <laughs> they screamed, "We didn't know you were half Jewish." No. <laughs> Um. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We no, and I almost got to screen for it, but then we were like to. I told John I didn't want him to do it. Yeah, so. and I said okay. <laughs> well, you um, were in a movie uh, last year that was written and directed by uh, the head writer. Uh, yeah, yes. right now. That's right, and that, yeah, that was Kelly. around the time that I was like. But yeah, when you screen for SNL, you sign a seven-year contract. It's much like Scientology. <laughs> you <laughs> sign a billion-year contract <laughs> that you like can't like in the event that you get it then you can't say no. Like, you, like you, there's no way to get out of it. So, like, we were in a weird place where stuff was happening for us, and, and so, so... I said no. I'm also John's lawyer. Yeah, so yeah. I said so no. we said no. Um, but what were we talking about? My oh, career. the movie. Yes, Chris Kelly, the head writer. No, he wrote a beautiful movie about his mom dying of cancer. Other people. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. If you feel like sobbing yeah, it's and laughing. Sad. Molly Shane. Molly Shane gives a really beautiful performance. Yeah. She's amazing. Uh, next question. Hi guys, Hi. this question is for John. You appear on Thirty on Thirty Rock. How was that experience? Well, I it was my first real job that I ever got, like first proper job, and it was um, I was so happy because I loved that show so much, and I was my scenes were with Jane Krakowski, who's like a comedic hero of mine, and I was so I was so excited that every scene I was like. Like I like I was like and I also was like it's Thirty Rock it's big the jokes are real big so I can be hammy like there's no pressure to be like small, so I was like I literally even though my part was so small I couldn't see that because I was too excited I was like this is such a big opportunity so I like when you if you look at it it's like if you go back and watch the episode every it's like all these wide shots where I'm like one of six people and I'm like. And everyone else is standing still, and and I was so hammy that they cut me down to one line. I had like five lines. It's like oh, it's one three word line, and I had like a party to watch the episode. <laughs> like literally had friends over, and we were watching. It. And like after every scene where like my lines were cut, people were like, "It's okay, it's okay." Um, oh. It was bad. And then we got to the one my one line, and they're like, "Oh my god!" And I was like, "Shut up, <laughs> shut up." What was your line? It was. Are you ready? Yeah. No, Jenna, you. Well, I think people probably don't want to bring it up because they think I'm tired of talking about it, but you probably recognize me. I had a line on Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> and so I just like to say Thank it. you for respecting that. To kind of diffuse the not... tension. Yeah. What, was, what was your line it's on so Lizzie good. McGuire? Ready? Hey, Lizzie, I love your pants. <laughs> oh, no, no, it was, hey, Lizzie, very cool pants. Very cool pants. Yeah. Very cool pants. Did you have, a, view, did you have a, view, a viewing party for, for your line? No. <laughs> but I did talk about it for eight years <laughs> afterwards, yeah. Um, next question right here. I think it's probably Hi. our last question. Oh, no, Hi. we have one over there, too. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, and now that you guys have worked together on this miniseries, is there any other projects that you would like to work on together? Next? This is it. I just think I that... I know. And being here is I so clarifying. It. I know. Love you. Like, love you. Love you, but... But the second we sat down, I was like, like no. no. Yeah. yeah, I just think that we've done what we did. <laughs> And it, look what we have, to, and but no. But no, it's a no. Um, no, we are trying. <laughs> we're absolutely. trying to make um, another show right now. 
trying to make know. a proper like half hour TV show. Yeah. And then comedy. you know we have like great big dreams like in the like we want to do like we'd love to do like a movie where we play a straight couple getting married and you know like we have all nope, these like give away the idea. <laughs> okay, John. sorry. Yeah. But yes, we are continuing to make things together. Yes. Uh, when you do, if you were to like sell a half hour comedy, do you fear that you wouldn't be able to do something sort of as as weird and 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 sort of pathological as, as this? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I think the half hour comedy that we're trying to make is not as pathological as this. It's a lot more positive, so I'm not too worried. I do, of course, worry when we get so spoiled by a place like Vimeo, where you get to have like literally zero notes, and you get total creative freedom. So that is scary. The idea of working with a place that would be like, what if he's not gay? You know. Um, so I think, <laughs> I think, yeah, that that is a little scary. But I also think we're in this like crazy moment of TV where everyone gets to do everything, and like I feel like we're probably gonna land somewhere. Well, they'll let us. I solemnly pray <laughs> we will land somewhere. Yeah. I think we've never one more question. Hey guys, I saw you Tuesday. It was really great. And I wanted oh, to ask. Thanks for um, coming. Oh, I loved it. I want to ask why you chose to do show someone performing in a mall in your show, because I forgot people did that, and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> there was something so we wanted to like just show that he wasn't successful. You know, like like mall performer. Like like it was clear that he thinks he's killing it. You know, but no one's watching is also. A, yeah. There's like seven people that are kind of like what? They were like, shopping. Barely and watching. Like, yeah. This group of dancers that look like the sort yes. of Trump cheerleader yes, little girls. Exactly. You know? He has Absolutely. two like tiny girls who are like nailing yeah. the choreography. They were so amazing, those yeah. girls. We but no, we and we literally we shot, we like made people in the mall um sign releases. Um so like so we had so we had actual people who were shopping that day who were like, Who is that? So and you the, shot in a real mall that, yeah. was, uh, that was in operation while she Yes, was, that's kind of Andy's into that, like real people. You'll notice when you watch it, you're like, oh, that person is clearly just a real person yeah. watching. It's really funny because they, they're really judging me. Was that a difficult, was it difficult to shoot just practically in like a working mall? I mean, we're so spoiled because we for us, we, weren't, we didn't have to wrangle that situation yeah. at all. So for us, it was just like, huh? Yeah, but, uh, but I think it worked out pretty well. Totally. Yeah. Sound was hard, but it's fine. Sound's always hard, right? Sound's <laughs> hard. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, 555 is on Vimeo right now, right? Yes. People can go watch all that. Go watch it. It's so You funny. have to. Thank these, you. These two guys Please, are so great. you have to buy it. It's three ninety nine. Like, don't get a coffee one day. Yeah. yeah. Please. And I'll send you my screeners. No, I won't no. do that. <laughs> Guys, 555, thank you so much for Thanks being here. Thank you so us. much. Of course. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky.